Welcome to the Louis File. I want to spend a few moments uh, talking to you about the uh, story of the prodigal son found in Luke 15. The story goes a man had two sons. The youngest son came to the father and said, I want my inheritance now. So the father gave it to him. The young boy, young son, took off into a far country and he blew his money. He had a big time, partied it up with his buddies, uh, and then he ran out of money. Well, <clears throat> you know what happened then? Family or the friends disappeared on him. So he found himself in trouble and it says that there was a famine. So he sold himself or hired himself out to this man that uh, raised hogs or raised pigs. And this young man says, well, he's got to do something. So he starts feeding these hogs. And as he's feeding the hogs, he starts to uh, look at the hog food or the slop and think, I could eat that. I mean, he, he's really hungry and he's, he's actually <laughs> contemplating eating, eating the hog food. And, it's, and it says an interesting thing right there in that same verse. It says, and no one or no man gave to him. And, and I think that there's the key right there. He lost everything. He found himself desiring things he knew were not desirable. He knew were not good for him. He knew that it was not good for him. I mean, in the story, the idea here is, is that this would have been a Jewish young man, and just having a job around hogs would have been unclean, much less eating what they were, they were eating. So he found himself in, in dire straits. And uh, so then it says that no man gave to him, and then he came to himself. It was only after he had absolutely no support. Isn't that something? You know, I, uh, I uh, teach the Bible at the jail and at prison, and I've noticed that when those guys uh, get put in there and they have nothing, I just talked to one the other night that said he has no money, no visits, no phone calls, no one comes to see him. And he's looking at me and he's saying, Louie, I'm tired. You know, and he's, he's ready to come home. Now, I don't know if he's done this before, but he looked sincere to me. He looked like he was finally at the end. You know, the prodigal story goes on to say the young man makes the decision. He says, my father has uh, servants who are, who are living better than I am, so I'll just go home and I'll just tell my father to make me a slave rather than live like this. So he made his way home, and it says on his way home, the father saw him and ran to him and hugged him and kissed him. And he, he called his servants in and he said, get some sandals for his feet, get my best robe. And, and he put his ring on his finger and he said, my son, my son, my boy who was dead is alive again. We get ready to celebrate. He said, go and kill the fatted calf. We're getting ready to have a big old party. We're going to have us a block party. We're going to call all the neighbors in. My boy has come home. He's alive. You know, and that, that story is, uh, is a perfect picture of the heart of the Father, the heart of God. You know, it doesn't matter how much we stink. It doesn't matter how broke we are. It doesn't matter how miserable we are. It doesn't matter how wasteful we've been. If we just come to our senses, and for a lot of us, it, it takes that moment when we realize there's no one here to help. And it's only in that moment that we arise and go to our Father. You see, the problem with the prodigal wasn't so much that he partied, it wasn't so much that he was feeding the pigs and he was in a far country. While all those things were not good, the real issue was is that he was away from the Father. The Father just wants us to come home. He just wants us to come home. So if you are that prodigal, and if you find yourself watching this video by chance, and I pray that you do, and you feel like you're hopeless, and you feel like there's no one left to fix your problems or to help you, or no one cares, there's one that does, and he's the Father. And he's the loving Father, and all you have to do is arise and go to him. Call out to him, and he'll come running. He'll come running. All he wants you to do is turn toward him, and he will do the rest. Just turn toward him. And uh, he will scoop you up. <laughs> he'll put you back in line. And he'll love you. And, he, you know, this prodigal said he was going to tell his father, I'm going to just make me a slave. 
And he tried to say it, and the father didn't even address it. He never even said, oh, no, oh, well, okay. You know, a lot of us would probably say, well, now you might want to live in the barn for a while, and, and then I'll see if you really mean it. No, the father didn't do any of that. The father just said, get the, ca get the calf, get the, get the uh, sandals, get the robe, and put his ring on him and reinstated him as his son and loved him. Now, the older brother, that was a different story, but I'm running out of time for now. Maybe I'll talk, about, I'll talk later about the older brother and how we don't really want to be him. But for now, uh, thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next time.